The story begins with a mysterious woman casting a spell, fighting against a demonic beast. She fires her attack, causing an enormous explosion that consumes the area. She emerges from the flames, checking on a young girl named Megamine, who asks her how she can be just like her. The woman wonders who freed her from her seal, and she sees Megamine holding a familiar object. Megamine tells her that was a puzzle she just completed, but the explosion blew some of the pieces away. The woman offers to grant one of Megamine's wishes, but she wishes for world domination or bigger boobs, but she can't grant either of her wishes. So Megamine decides she wants to learn the magic that she just used. The woman tries to deter her, revealing that the spell has a lot of drawbacks, but when Megamine hears it's the most powerful explosion magic, she becomes excited. Sometime later, we see Megamine walking home with her sister, with a bucket full of crawfish. They encounter a girl named Yun Yun, and Megamine notices that she looks hungry, so she gives her a crawfish before leaving. They arrive at their house, where their mother has prepared a special dinner, which is a surprise, because they don't usually have fancy food. Megamine's father reveals that they managed to sell one of his best items from their shop, so they are celebrating, and reveal that they can afford to buy her a new uniform. Megamine is overjoyed trying it on, declaring that she will become the greatest master of explosion magic, leaving them stunned. Megamine enrolls at the Crimson Demon Academy, where the headmaster welcomes them. He starts giving a lengthy speech, but the other teachers quickly interrupt him and drag him away. Megamine looks around, seeing her classmates as stepping stones, and we learn that there are only 11 students in the class. Union approaches Megamine, who doesn't recognize her. She tells Megamine that they are from the same village, so she was looking forward to meeting her. But Megamine thinks she is some kind of stalker. Union claims that she enrolled in the school to defeat her, so they immediately become rivals. Their classes begin, and we learn that the people from their race, the Crimson Demons, will only be considered adults after they learn advanced magic. But Megamine is only interested in explosion magic. During one of the lectures, they discuss the types of magic, but Megamine wonders why explosion magic isn't in their books. Their teacher Puchin tells her not to pursue explosion magic, saying it has no practical applications, and he even calls it a joke, making the class laugh at her. We see them in an open field, where Puchin asks them about the most important thing for a crimson demon during combat. Yunyun thinks it's composure, while Megamine says that it's destructive power, but they are both wrong. And a student named Aru says it's most important to look cool during combat. Puchin demonstrates this, summoning dark clouds, calling lightning down to his staff, and all the girls are impressed. He orders everyone to split up into pairs, so that they can come up with a cool way to introduce themselves. Megamine pairs up with Aru, and Yun Yun has no partner, so she is forced to train with Puchin. Everyone tries to come up with cool poses and introductions, but they're all having a hard time, except for Aru who gets it on her first attempt. On the other hand, Yun Yun is not doing very well, because she appears to be very shy. Megamine notices this, and goes to Puchin, telling him that she isn't feeling well so she wants to be excused. Puchin doesn't allow her, but Megamine pretends that her inner demon is awakening, so Puchin tells her to take a break. Aru pairs up with Yun Yun, and helps her come up with a cool introduction, but it suddenly starts raining, and Puchin panics, because the headmaster's tulips are awakened from the rain. He orders everyone to catch the tulips, fearing for his job. But everyone panics, as Puchin blames the dark god for causing the rain. After a while, the girls are left devastated, and Megamine wonders when they are going to actually learn magic. Union mentions that explosion magic might not be a joke if used by the right person, but Megamine tells her not to be so friendly, because she is her rival. Megamine and Union visit an equipment store, where a dagger catches Union's eyes, thinking it's pretty. She ends up buying it, and Megamine challenges her to stab between her fingers with great speed using her knife. Yunyun says she can't do it, admitting defeat and giving Megamine her lunch. Megamine goes home, where her sister informs her that she caught something, showing her a magic beast and allowing Megamine to keep it for herself. She takes it with her to the academy, introducing it to her classmates as her familiar. They find it adorable, so they decide to give it their food, making Megamine feel relieved because it will make feeding the familiar more affordable. Megamine reveals that the familiar is not safe in her house, so she brought it to the academy, but Union wonders if Puchin is okay with it. Megamine asks Puchin if the familiar can stay with her, 
claiming that it will die if it is separated from her. But Puchin doesn't allow it, saying that it goes against the school's rules. However, Megamine states that the familiar is the fragmented aspect of her soul and the incarnation of her dark side, which will go berserk if left alone. So Puchin suddenly allows the familiar to stay, saying that her explanation sounded pretty good. After that, he tells everyone about this special lesson for the day, explaining that monsters have appeared in a village, but the villagers have already dealt with them, so only the weak monsters remain. Puchin says that they will go there to level up faster, ordering them to form groups. Megamine joins Aru's group, and Megamine is about to ask Yin Yin to join them, but she gets invited by another group, calling her their friend, so she goes with them, making Megamine feel rejected. They go to the woods, where Puchin gives them massive weapons, claiming that they can lift it if they focus their minds. But Yin Yin notices that the weapons are all light and hollow, so Puchin gives her a demerit for spoiling their fun. Puchin freezes a lizard, and orders them to kill it so that they can level up. Megamine steps forward, readying her weapon as she gives a cool speech, but the lizard suddenly breaks free and attacks her, causing her to struggle as the other students watch her. But she is eventually able to defeat it. Union's group is about to take out a rabbit, but they find it too cute and can't do it. Megamine grabs one of them from behind, pushing her to swing, when suddenly, a gargoyle appears, and they all start running away. Aura thinks it's a sign that the Dark God is returning, and knows that the gargoyle is from one of the petrified ornaments being collected by adults. They jump over a huge pit, and there is suddenly an explosion that takes out the gargoyle. Megamine looks at the bottom of the pit, where she recognizes a wizard named Bukarori. She wonders why he is in the hole, and Bukarori explains that he made that pit for a girl named Soketa, who is known as a beauty, because she goes to that forest every day, so he wanted her to fall into the pit, so he could save her, but he ended up getting trapped instead. Bukarori wants them to save him, but they find him creepy, so they leave him alone. They run to the village, but they see it being attacked by gargoyles. Puchin arrives with the headmaster, who realizes that his petrified ornaments are the cause of the problem, but he tells the students not to worry because they will deal with it. There are four more mages that arrive, and they all attack the gargoyles with all kinds of different spells, impressing the girls who want to learn the same spells. But Megamine isn't impressed, remembering how incredible it was when she witnessed explosion magic. The students realize that the mages are destroying the village with their spells, so they try to tell them to stop, but they seem to have gone mad casting their spells, and Puchin completely blows it up. That evening, they realize that the village has been destroyed, but they blame the Dark God for its destruction and are determined to overcome the trial. The next day, the village has been completely rebuilt, but the villagers blame them for its destruction. In class, all the girls call the familiar Megamine, since it's supposed to be a manifestation of her soul. But she gets annoyed at the girls, and Yin Yun suggests naming it Kuro since it's a black cat. They think it's a weird name, but Megamine accepts it for the time being. At that moment, Puchin arrives, saying that they should study in the library, since the monsters in the area are getting aggressive. We see them in a library, and they are all bored, because they don't earn skill points by reading books. Megamine reads a book about explosion magic, and she learns that explosion magicians are often excluded from parties. She goes to Yun Yun, and notices that she is reading a book about plants having hearts, and she says that plants can be their friends. Megamine thinks she is too desperate for friends, saying they could become friends if they stop being rivals, but their other classmates appear, offering to be Union's friends. Union excitedly goes to them, but she seems to have no idea how friendships work. They start talking about guys, while they fix Union's hair, and Megamine finds the conversation pretty cringe. A spider suddenly appears, and Megamine tries to flick it away, but it keeps on moving around, and Megamine becomes pissed off. Yun Yun is looking for her hair tie, but they see Megamine launching it towards the spider, but she misses. So she gets another hair tie from Yun Yun's hair, and launches it toward the spider, knocking it down. Yun Yun gets angry at Megamine, because that was the first time that a friend fixed her hair. Bukarori suddenly appears behind them, claiming that he has learned teleportation magic. We learn that there can only be three spots registered for teleportation, so they wonder why Bukarori decided to pick the library as one of them. He claims that it's because of nostalgia, but it was really because Sokena used to visit the library often. Bukarori reveals that his other teleport location is right in front of her house, making the girls think that he really is a stalker. 
He wants to ask for their advice, but they throw a book at him, knocking him down, and they bury him with books. Later, we see Bukarori spying on Soketa, but Megamine states that he has no chance since he is a neat. He begs them to ask Soketa about the type of guy she likes, but Megamine refuses, saying that Soketa is a fortune teller, so he should ask her to read his fortune. However, he has no money to pay for the reading, so he is asking for Megamine's help, offering to give her a meal in the future, which Megamine agrees with. Megamine comes up with a plan, where Yun Yun will threaten Soketa with her dagger, and Bukarori will arrive to save her, but Yun Yun thinks the plan is stupid. She suggests killing monsters in the area to earn some money, and use it to have Soketa read his fortune, but Megamine says that they should go with the cooler alternative since they are crimson demons. Bukarori uses a skill to make him invisible as he crawls towards Soketa, but she notices his presence, so she hits him with her stick. Soketa asks him why he's doing this every day, while Megamine reveals that Bukarori has something to tell her. But Soketa thinks that Bukarori really hates her, since he always follows her around, and even tried to ambush her. At that moment, huge bears appear, surprising them because the bears don't normally travel in a pack. Soketa wants to deal with the bears, but Bukarori says he will take care of it, claiming he wants to protect her smile. He uses a powerful flame spell to blow all of the bears away, but Soketa also gets blown away, so Megamine calls him stupid and Soketa beats him up. After that, we see them at Soketa's house, where she agrees to read Bukarori's fortune for free, since he just saved her from the bears. He wants to know about his future lover, so Soketa holds onto a crystal ball, claiming that his future lover's face should appear, but it doesn't show anything, so he starts crying. Soketa tries to cheer him up, revealing that her fortune isn't always correct, but he runs out of the house as he continues crying. Soketa admits that Bukarori is an interesting guy, and Yun Yun suggests reading her own fortune, but Soketa says that fortune tellers can't predict their own future. Back at the academy, Yun Yun wonders if Bukarori has a chance, but Megamine thinks that he needs to find a job since he owes her a meal. Puchin arrives, telling them that there are weak monsters in the area, so they should go home with a partner. Yun Yun is about to partner up with Megamine, but the two girls asks her to go with them, so Megamine walks home alone. But Yun Yun ends up going after her, wanting to go with her. Megamine claims that she doesn't need her protection, but Yun Yun reminds her that she was useless against the bears. They are about to fight, but Kuro suddenly arrives, and Megamine agrees to go home with Yun Yun, deciding to put their rivalry on hold for a day. The next day, Yun Yun gives Megamine her lunch, saying that she won't be challenging her today. Puchin enters the room, informing them that monsters have been spotted around the village, so they will have to gather enough villagers to redo the seal on the Dark God, Lady Wolbach, since it appears to be weakening. He goes over the results of their exam, telling them the top three scorers will be given a skill-up potion. Megamine is given a potion as the top scorer, but Yun Yun doesn't receive one, so Megamine teases her. But Yun Yun doesn't want to compete, making Megamine think there's something wrong with her. Later, Yun Yun asks her what it means to be friends, because their classmate Funi is asking for money to buy medicine for her little brother, and Yun Yun doesn't know what to do. Megamine says that true friends don't offer charity, but endure trials together, and Yun Yun thanks her for the advice. Bukarori approaches them, and they start talking about the Dark God's minions. Megamine suggests breaking the seal to slay the Dark minions, but Bukarori tells them that their ancestors captured a Dark God from another region, just to seal it in their area, and make the village sound cooler. Later, Megamine tells her sister Kameko to watch the house as she leaves. Her sister agrees to this, but she wanders off shortly after Megamine leaves. Megamine spies on Yun Yun, who gives Funi a bag of coins, saying it's fine because they're friends. Yun Yun leaves for the next class, and Funi states that her conscience is bothering her. Megamine confronts them, questioning their motives, as they claim they were just doing some fundraising for her brother. But Megamine says it's a trivial matter, and she seems to have an idea. Megamine meets them after class, giving them a potion they can use for treating illness. But she wants them to return Union's money, saying they will no longer need it. They initially refuse to hand it over, but Megamine becomes angry because they are taking advantage of Union's conscience, so they give it to her, thinking she must really like Union. Megamine denies it, but they are not convinced, seeing how Megamine really cares for her. Megamine returns the money to Yun Yun, who treats her to some food, 
and Megamine ends up eating a lot. After that, she rests on a bench, saying she will graduate after one more skill up potion. But this makes Yunyun Yun sad, because she wants to graduate with her, revealing that she was trying to adjust her skill points to match Megamine's. Megamine becomes upset, as she realizes that Yunyun Yun intentionally scored low on the test so that she wouldn't receive a skill up potion. Yunyun Yun claims she doesn't want to surpass her, but Megamine reveals that she already has enough points to learn advanced magic. However, she isn't learning it, because she is saving her points for explosion magic. Yun Yun tells her that it takes a lot of magic power to cast it, calling her crazy, as she reminds her that it's considered joke magic. They start fighting, and Yun Yun comes out on top, but Megamine claims she wasn't fighting at full strength, because she was too full. Yun Yun asks Megamine why she's so obsessed with explosion magic, so she tells her how she was saved by a mage who used explosion magic, and she found it breathtaking. She informs Yun Yun that she is going to go on a journey after she graduates, and Yun Yun reveals how she plans to become the village chief. At that moment, they see dark creatures flying toward the village, so they run back to Megamine's house, and are surprised to see that the door is broken. In a flashback, Kameko sees a monster, as it tries to complete a puzzle, thinking it's a big goblin. He corrects her, telling her he is a demon, and introducing himself as Host, the right-hand man of Lady Wolbach. Kameko finds him cool, and Host takes a liking to her. She immediately goes to the puzzle, as Host reveals he needs it to undo the seal on the Dark God. Kameko ends up completing the puzzle, giving it to him, and he leaves to get the other materials needed to break the seal. She has a break for lunch, and she sees Kuro in the area, which is where she found him from. Back in the present, Megamine starts looking for Kameko, but she can't find her, so she starts to panic, thinking she was eaten. They see dark creatures trying to take Kuro, and Megamine throws her sword at them, but she completely misses, claiming that they must have a shield of wind. The creatures fly away with Kuro, but Megamine doesn't seem to care, saying Kameko is their priority. They go to the woods, where they see Kameko facing a group of dark creatures. She takes on a threatening posture, and the creatures seem to be afraid of her. Megamine thinks about using her skill points to learn magic, but Yun Yun notices her hesitating, so she learns intermediate magic, and casts lightning to defeat the creatures. As Yun Yun goes on a quest to save Kuro, Megamine retreats with Kameko, thinking about how Yun Yun is going to graduate because she learned intermediate magic. She knows that this will make it harder for her to learn advanced magic, so she starts crying, and turns back to help Yun Yun with her quest. Meanwhile, Yun Yun is able to save Kuro, but more monsters make their way toward her. The sisters return, and Megamine says she doesn't want to be in debt to her rival. Yun Yun claims she is now a real mage, as she uses a fireball to defeat the creatures, but she ends up becoming exhausted. Kameko points to a swarm of dark creatures approaching, and they realize that the adults are herding them to their location, to destroy them with advanced magic. Megamine thinks that Kuro is attracting the monsters, and she plans to learn advanced magic to help them escape, but she realizes that she now has enough skill points to learn explosion, so she starts laughing, telling her companions to brace themselves, as she uses all of her skill points to learn it. Megamine unleashes a powerful aura, and Yun Yun realizes she has finally done it. A column of red sigils appear, as she recalls how the mage used explosion magic to save her in the past. Megamine calls herself a master of explosion magic, and she casts the spell, causing a massive explosion that kills all of the monsters in the area. Megamine finally realizes her dream, but she suddenly collapses. The next day, everyone blames Megamine's explosion for breaking the Dark God seal, but it was actually Kameko who broke the seal. They go to Soketa, who reads Megamine's fortune, and tells her she will meet new friends in the rookie town of Axel, but she pauses as she realizes how incapable they are, abruptly ending the session. Megamine graduates with Yun Yun, and Megamine plans to save enough money to go on a journey. She sees Kuro, afraid that Kameko might eat her, so she decides to make it her official familiar. Megamine looks for a job, but she has a hard time finding one. At night, everyone witnesses an explosion, thinking it's the work of the Mad Exploder, and the next day, Yun Yun accuses Megamine of causing the explosion, but Megamine claims that it's not her fault, blaming society for squandering her gifts. Yun Yun says she has an idea, helping Megamine try other jobs, but they aren't doing well, and they even get beat up by potatoes while farming. At the end of the day, Megamine despairs, thinking her talents are being wasted. 
She asks Yun Yun to go on a date with her, and she casts Explosion at night, explaining it's part of her routine. But she becomes completely exhausted after casting the spell, and she asks Yun Yun to carry her home, but Bukarori suddenly appears, asking them about the Mad Exploder. Megamin claims they fought against the Mad Exploder, describing it as a demon woman, and Yun Yun wonders how Megamin can lie so easily. Yun Yun carries Megamin home, and she leaves her there, planning to do another job hunt the next day. A hooded lady visits Megamin's house, saying she's been searching for her. She introduces herself as Anna's, kneeling before her as she dedicates her life to protecting her. Megamin thinks Anna's is talking to her, but it turns out she was actually talking to Kuro, calling her Lady Wolbach. Kuro doesn't appear to be interested in her, and Megamin says that Kuro is a part of their family. But Anna's offers her 300,000 heiress, and Megamin immediately changes her tone, letting her have Kuro, who doesn't want to go with her. Anna's notices Kuro's behavior, so she decides to come back the next day, giving them time to say goodbye to Kuro. The next day, Yun Yun is shocked to learn about their deal, and Anna's arrives to take Kuro, who acts hostile, removing her hood, and revealing that she's a demon. They become suspicious, thinking Anna's will eat Kuro, but she claims that demons never break promises. However, the word promise makes her freak out, causing her to collapse. They have tea with her, and Anna's reveals that she somehow attracts men, but they have all broken their promises to her, so she sees them as trash. Bukarori suddenly arrives, asking Megamin if Anna's is the mad exploder. Megamin claims that she is, so Bukarori calls for reinforcements, and everyone chases her away. Later, Megamin asks Yun Yun to take care of Kuro, since she'll be leaving for her journey, since Anna's gave her enough money for her trip. Yun Yun takes Kuro, as Megamin reveals she has no plans to return to the village after she finds some reliable companions, saying she wants to become the Demon King. But Yun Yun claims she will have to defeat her if she becomes the Demon King, and as they part ways, Yun Yun tells Megamin to have a safe trip. The next day, Megamin goes to her classmates, and Funi gives her a staff, revealing that Megamin's potion helped her brother recover, while Ara gives Megamin her eye patch claiming it restricts her powers, but it's really just a fashion eye patch, and Megamine begins her journey, as she is teleported out of the village, arriving at the city of Arcanesia. She is excited as she begins her journey, but after a week, she becomes depressed, because she is already running out of money. We learn that the city of Arcanesia is surrounded by powerful monsters, so there are no quests that are suitable for a rookie like her. Megamine thinks about looking for a normal job, and she tries working as a waitress, but she immediately gets fired, because she harmed the customer who was making fun of her. She hears someone screaming, and she sees a girl with two men. The girl claims the men were trying to take advantage of her. Megamine decides to help her out, introducing herself with style, but the girl takes the chance to slip past and run away, and we learn that the girl is actually an Axis cultist, who is wanted for ruining a portrait of the goddess Eris which was hung up in their church. The girl reports them to an officer, so the officer walks to them, thinking they're harassing Megamine. As the men try to explain, the girl takes Megamine away, fleeing from the scene. They hide in an alley, where the girl introduces herself as Cecily, revealing she is an Axis priest, and giving Megamine a certificate of conversion, but Megamine refuses to join. Cecily realizes that Megamine is hungry, so she takes her to their church, where they give her some food, claiming that she has no obligation to join the Axis sect if she eats it. Megamine starts eating the food, as the Archpriest Zesta goes to her, knowing that she is struggling, so he offers to let Megamine stay in their church until she finds a job. Megamine is happy with his offer, asking him if there is anything she can do for him, but Zesta starts acting weird, thinking about what Megamine should do for him. Zesta receives a report, and he learns that not many people are joining their sect, blaming the rival heiress church for their situation. They start discussing ways to recruit new members, and Megamine speaks up, saying she can help. Megamine comes up with a plan, where she will pretend she dropped her apples, so that their target will help her out, and then Zesta will enter the scene to convert the target. They see a lady walking, but after seeing her assets, Zesta rushes in with the apples, dropping them in front of her, and he starts acting creepy, making the lady run away. Megamine realizes he can't follow the plan, so she changes it, saying Zesta will now pretend to attack her. They see a buff man, and Megamine blocks his path, asking for his help, as she claims that an old man is attacking her, but Zesta is nowhere in sight. 
we learn that the man is actually an off-duty police officer, so he starts asking for the details while Zesta hides from him. Megamine wants to try converting people on her own, asking Zesta to stay away from her. He helps her find a target, and Megamine trips right in front of her, pretending she got hurt. But we learn that the target is actually Yun Yun, who asks Megamine what she's doing. Yun Yun says that Kuro misses her, and Zesta informs Yun Yun about their plan to recruit new members to the Axis sect. He takes them to the Axis church, where he sees soldiers waiting for him, telling him he's under arrest, because he has been charged with conspiracy to commit treason. The officer informs them that the information was given to them by Soketa, as she accuses the Axis sect of tampering with the hot springs, because their sect is responsible for water control, thinking they have connections to the Demon King. Zesta denies the accusation, but he immediately gets taken away, and Yun Yun reveals that Soketa asked her to deliver a letter of prophecy, but she didn't know it would turn out like this. Cecily gives them an ice-cold jelly slime, saying they can have more if they join the Axis sect, and we learn that the jelly slime comes from the hot spring which they control. Cecily thinks that Zesta might be guilty, because weird things started happening after he joined. At that moment, soldiers suddenly arrive, saying they have found evidence, and showing them a ton of jelly slime mix. They claim that Zesta was seen carrying it around, but Megamine wonders why he would do such a thing, because if he wanted to ruin the hot springs, he could have poisoned it instead. Later, the officers let Zesta go, offering their apology to him, since he passed the lie detector test given by the prosecutor, but Megamine still wonders who has been pouring the jelly slime mix into the springs. They meet Anas, who still remembers what they did to her, telling them the townspeople won't be able to save them this time. Zesta seems to be interested in her, asking Megamine who she is, but Megamine tells him that she is their enemy. Anas thinks about attacking them, as Zesta tells her to hurt him instead, so she uses Fireball, revealing her horn. Zesta realizes she is a demon, so he uses Reflect to defend himself, saying he is forbidden from appreciating demon girls. Anas looks down on him since he is just a human priest, but Zesta uses a powerful exorcism spell, which almost hits her. They start to think she is the one behind the mess, but Anas has no idea what they're talking about. The townspeople start hunting her down, leaving her with no choice but to fly away. They manage to fix the water in the hot spring, and we learn that Megamine plans to go to the town of Axel where she can find her fated companions. Union wants to go with her, but Megamine intends to leave as soon as she has enough money to go on the trip. Zesta tells them that Anna's was able to escape, but he gives Megamine some money, which should be enough to cover her travel expenses, as he wants to thank her, because the recruitment methods she taught him could prove to be very useful. Megamine thinks about going to Axel right away, but Zesta tells her to stay the night since it's already late. She takes a bath with Cecily, who reveals that Zesta accidentally caused the mess while cleaning the water, since he thought the slime mix was baking soda, but Cecily asks her to keep it a secret. Megamine complains about how the bath is too small, as Cecily reveals that the baths were made using rupture magic. Megamine thinks about making a bigger bath, so she uses her explosion magic to create the largest bath in town. The next day, Zesta is happy to learn that the bath is now big enough to fit everyone, and he tells Megamine to visit them when she returns. He casts Blessing on Megamine before she leaves, but refuses to do the same for Yun Yun, because she was the one who got him arrested. They board the coach to Axel, and Megamine looks forward to meeting her new companions. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.